nothing like loading up the bags on a big ADV rig and setting out for a long weekend. And all the machines we chose for this test do that job of crunching miles and finding new sites. Yet, they do go about it in very different ways. This is the bike that everyone's talking about and it's the impetus for this test. Everybody wants to know how this American Adventure Tour holds up against two very well established bikes in this market. We've already done three days of riding, we've got a few more days to ride on these bikes, we've got dyno testing, weights and measures, then we got to take all that data, compile it and figure out which one is the best. So stick around to the end of the video and we'll let you know which one comes out on top. No big bore ADV comparison can be even considered without this first bike. That's the BMW R1250GS. Simply put, it is adventure motorcycling. Close your eyes and think of an ADV and you'll see a GS. BMW has ruled the segment for so long it's surprising riders don't say, hey, let's go GSing. Our particular test unit was a 2021 R1250GS 40 years edition. It's a long name to go with a long history of rally inspired travel. Ducati's Multistrada V4S is the spiciest meatball in the ADV world. Ducati launched the Multistrada in 2003 and it's constantly evolved and improved through the years. Now, 19 years on, this 2021 model has V4 power by the way of Ducati's Panigale Superbike. But it's got conventional valve springs for long valve inspection intervals. Even without Desmo, the V4S is the Superbike of the ADV world. But that doesn't mean it can't go off-road without confidence. Multistrada means many roads in Italian, and Ducati means it, especially with this latest generation. Harley Davidson shocked adventure bike fans when it first teased its Pan America concept in 2018. Three years later, the 2021 Pan America 1250 Special hit the market and was favorably reviewed after our first ride. It's no pretender in the segment and it has all the required equipment for things big ADV, and it even has a few tricks up its sleeve. Don't think push rods and a potato potato soundtrack. An all-new 60-degree dual overhead cam V-twin powers the Pan America with a character that is both modern and powerful. It's a new challenger in a fiercely fought arena and Harley-Davidson is very serious about taking the crown. In preparation for this test, we ran each machine through Cycle World's thorough and rigorous data gathering process. We weighed them, we measured them, we ran them on our in-house dyno, and we did performance testing on an airstrip test bed. Once this was complete, each brand's optional off-road focused tires were mounted and OEM bags were installed. The BMW and Harley-Davidson strapped on their soft luggage, while the Multistrada's plastic hard bags are its only option, but those do come standard on the V4S. Our test base in St. George, Utah gave us access to a variety of roads that included winding asphalt, fast and smooth dirt, rough and tumble two-track, and everything in between. We rode from a hot and dusty 2,700 foot baseline to a breathtaking 11,300 feet with bouts of cold rain thrown in. The route would test our patience while moving through the crowds of Zion National Park. It would also test our skills in the rocky and loose terrain of Dixie National Forest. Big miles and long days on the bikes are a must to truly understand these adventure tours, so that's what we did. Our first day saw an early start in Zion National Park. Crowds were heavy as the air temperatures climbed into the triple digits. This provided a good test of the heat management capabilities of these big horsepower units. Stop and go traffic for the next hour did reveal that each bike does put out some heat when the temps rise, as should be expected. Making big power produces heat. The BMW slowly poaches your toes as heat wafts off the cylinders while the Pan Am is set to broil on your right foot peg. And for the Multi, well, it's like palm olive. You're soaking in it. Once free of the gates of Zion, the heat dropped and it was time to give it the beans. Here on the open road, the Multistrada V4S is king. On the CW dyno, the V4S puts out 143.8 horsepower at 10,500 RPM, and it's the most happy to be spun up in the high rev ranges. Punch it, and the horizon rushes towards you in a hurry. Right behind the Ducati is the Pan America with 128.2 horsepower at 9,130 RPM. While it's not a MotoGP ADV like the Multi, it's plenty quick with torque power delivery reaching 80.9 pound-feet of torque at 4,300 RPM. For comparison, the Multi puts out 77.8 pound-feet at a much higher 7,400 RPM. 
BMW shift cam boxer is outclassed in horsepower here with just 117.4 horsepower at 7,700 RPM. But its torque is the top of the heap with 91.5 pound feet. Roll on the throttle hard, and there's a sound from the exhaust that's reminiscent of an A10 Warthog's 30 millimeter rotary cannon. Each machine has a complete suite of ride modes tied to trash control, throttle response, power levels, and ABS. This makes all that big twin power manageable on and off. Eco, rain, and road are the standard choices for the BMW, but our test unit was equipped with a $3,700 premium package that also adds Dynamic, Dynamic Pro, Enduro, and Enduro Pro modes for a total of seven modes. The Multistrada V4S has four modes, Sport, Touring, Urban, and Enduro. Pan America 1250 Special gives you a total of seven modes, with road, rain, off-road, off-road plus, and three customizable modes, two for the street and one for off-road. Navigating these modes is fairly straightforward on each model, but the user interfaces for other functions are quite different across the line. Each has a full color TFT dash, but some are easier to read than others. Pan America ranks last here with some font sizes that are so small, our editor-in-chief Mark Hoyer described it as an eye test for those with better than 2020 vision at speed. Optometric issues aside, the HD dash is bright and clear. Ditto for the Multistrada and the BMW, the GS being the easiest on the eyes. However, the big beamer is frustrating when it takes five button presses to reset the trip meter at a gas station. The Multi also gave us fits until we learned the ways of scrolling through the info screen. Then, all was good. After running north on Highway 89 through Mount Carmel Junction and Glendale, we turned east and up onto the plateaus between Escalante and Canap, where wide, loose, fast-flowing dirt roads let us play with the off-road modes and fiddle with trash control settings. Modern off-road trash control is a revelation in adventure motorcycling. It boosts the confidence of the average rider, and any bike so equipped becomes friendly and rideable. And the same systems can be exploited by experts to coax insane levels of performance and speed out of the same bikes. With your feet up, your head over the handlebars and elbows out, while sideways at 80 miles an hour, you really begin to appreciate these machines. On these fast and sometimes very loose roads, the Harley Davidson excelled, displaying the most competent cornering while an off-road plus. That mode's power delivery is just the right mix of meaty torque and big power for life in the dirt. Rear tire spin-up is predictable and smooth, and when the TC steps in, there's no real indication that it's actually limited to the spin. You just feel like a really good rider. Enduro Pro Mode on the BMW is nearly as good, and the torque-rich character out of tighter turns pushes the R1200GS forward with authority. The engine's connection to your right wrist is uncanny when the dirt isn't too rough. Ducati's rocket ship is intoxicating when you can see far enough to let it stretch its legs. Triple digit speeds are easily possible if you've got the space and the nerve in the dirt. In the corners with the TC turned down to the lowest setting, there's still a little too much intervention. Power is cut too abruptly, causing an undulating tail lock as you screw it on. But my goodness, it is fast. Cutting across the top of the Dixie National Forest on the way to Brian Head's 11,300 foot lookout, smooth dirt gives way to rough and rocky two track. Here, the Ducati surprised us with a well balanced setting from its semi active Skyhook suspension as it strokes through 6.7 and 7.1 inches of travel front and rear. Pounding through the rocks is controlled, but you do feel the heft and the width of the large fuel tank. Throwing the V4S around is a test of physical fitness in comparison to the BMW. It's not that you can't get the job done on the Multistrada, it's just a little more sluggish to react to inputs and has a greater moment of inertia than the other two. When the going is slow and technical, the GS shines. It seems to balance all by itself, even at walking speeds, allowing riders to pick a line and then pick that line apart. When the pace quickens, however, the lack of compression and rebound damping on the BMW's ESA rear shock kills its forward drive. It's enough to knock it offline in the most extreme terrain. Up front, 7.5 inches of telelever suspension eats up moderate-sized rocks and potholes. But just as with the 7.9 inches in the rear, the bike can blow through that travel quickly at speed if the smoothest path isn't selected. Both ends feels less stout in comparison to the Harley and Ducati semi-active units. Harley-Davidson has fitted Showa semi-active suspension to Pan Am, and in the off-road stiff setting, it does its best job at controlling wheel action through 7.5 inches of travel front and rear. When pushed hard, the Harley-Davidson moves through large volcanic rocks, tree roots, and chuck holds with the most composure of the three machines. 
It will blow through the stroke on G outs and will bottom loudly on the skid plate, but when that happens, both wheels stay in line and on course. All three bikes have electronically adjustable preload. The BMW and the Ducati adjusting preload depending on the rider selection and according to what's being carried on the bike. The rider can choose rider only, rider and passenger, rider with luggage, and rider with passenger with luggage. Harley equipped our Test Pan America with its optional adaptive ride height, which takes automatic preload a step further. The system automatically sets up the rear sag 30% and then lowers the rear suspension when you come to a stop to reduce the seat height by up to two inches. This means turning around on the trail and stopping on uneven ground is easier on the Pan Am than any of the others. We didn't have any issue with losing ground clearance at low speeds, but anyone who's concerned about it can take the extra step to lock it out during that sort of riding. We also tested the lighting on each bike during the moonless night when the danger of deer entering our path was very real. All three machines have full LED lighting and the spread and quality of light from each is excellent, including the cornering light functions. Our late night ride also brought protection from the elements into play, and once again, all three were strong performers. Heated grips kept our hands warm, and adjustable windscreens set at the highest positions cut the wind. Screen adjustment mechanisms of the GS and the Multi are very well thought out and easy to use. The Pan Americas, it's much less so. Sure, the wind protection was solid, but the screen feels flimsy and the adjustment lever is clunky and small. It also became hard to move due to dust buildup. On dry asphalt curves, the V4S is the king, thanks to its ability to leave apexes quickly in sport mode as the ride is taut and composed. Pan America also tightens the ride up in road mode, but not to the sport bike level of the Ducati. Things are a little softer and less precise. Select Dynamic on the R1200GS and you'll be amazed with the change in the chassis attitude. Preload is increased and the GS is tipped forward on its nose for quick and extremely light handling. Sadly, the lackluster rebound damping is still an issue here and mid-corner bumps can upset a finely chosen one. All three of these big adventure bikes are remarkable at covering distances. For general traveling on the street and mild to moderate fire roading, you'd be more than pleased with the BMW, Ducati, or the Harley-Davidson. Pushing the limits just a little further and a little farther, like we did here, adds separation between the trio and exposes their strong and weak points. At the end of the third day, it was clear which of these adventure bikes was our winner. The Multistrada V4S truly is ready for all roads, but not so much as the Harley-Davidson and the BMW. Ducati's high-performance superbike DNA shines clearly through on the V4S. If you're looking to embarrass sport bike squids on the street and then wave see ya as you exit onto dirt roads at the top of the mountain, the 2021 Ducati Multistrada is the bike for you. BMW's R1250 GS is an exceptional motorcycle. Its boxer engine has character unlike any other offering in the ADV world. It's almost too easy to ride in many places and it's an icon for so many reasons. If not for its suspension performance in the dirt, the BMW probably would have won. In its first test, the Pan America has soundly beaten the odds-on favorite ADV all-time world champion and an insanely fun and Italian beast. Its lively engine split the difference between the B4's rev-happy power and the GS's grunt. It simply worked in more situations than the competition. Its suspension was balanced, refined, and controlled no matter the terrain or the surface, making it easier when the going got tough. That, above all else, is the most important trait of an adventure bike. What good is the motorcycle if it can get you into trouble, but it can't get you out?